All right. So, yeah, thank you for the introduction, Regina. Um, as Regina said, I'm a data technical product owner. Um, and the topic for today is talking about data as a product. And um, so without further ado, um, when people think about products, right, you would normally think about um, things you buy at the grocery store. Maybe it's um, groceries, food stuff, um, or more so sometimes when people think about products, um, if you're, depending on what generation you're talking to, they're thinking about technology products, right? So like, you know, gadgets, iPhones, um, iPads, um, things like that, even, you know, doorbells now, like your ring doorbell, just gadgets in general. But has anyone ever thought about data as a product, right? Um, and I asked this question because, um, you know, Data is everywhere, right? And when you talk about data as a product, the raw product in itself is, um, is, is, is data. But for it to become something of like a product that can be utilized, it has to be processed, right? And when you process this um, data, it becomes, um, you can either process it and it becomes um, consumed in the form of a report. Um, it could be consumed in the form of a dashboard. Um, and when I say dashboard, it's not like this um, airplane cockpit here, not that kind of dashboard. Um, I'm talking about the dashboard in the top right corner. And sometimes, you know, you might have um, your customer asking for like a data dump, right? Which is like in the form of an Excel sheet in the bottom, bottom right corner. And there are other kinds of ways that people would request for data or, or the product that the data is going to be processed into. Um, so the question is, why view data as a product? Um, like I said earlier, data is everywhere, right? It's ubiquitous. Um, it's now embedded in our system, you know, in, our, in our society uh, and in our lives. Everything that we pretty much engage with that is electronic produces data in one way or the other. But then what are you going to do with all of this data, right? Okay, all of this data is being processed, but what are you going to do with it? It's, 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 it's not useful unless it's processed into something that then translates into value. And that's what businesses are constantly trying to do. They're constantly trying to leverage um, their data or data in general, depending. It might be theirs, it might be external, um, to kind of um, give themselves an advantage. And here I have a, I have a picture of... Um, you know, these guys working on a rig and you might ask what's the relationship between, you know, guys working on a rig, drilling oil and data. And um, as you may have heard, you know, people say that there are things like that cliche saying of, oh, you know, data is the new oil. Um, but what they really mean is like, just like crude oil, you know, it needs to be processed into petroleum product. So data needs to be processed into something that's going to give value. And the way it's consumed is in the form of a report, a dashboard, things like that. And um, when, when that happens, you know, and they have the final product, wh whether it's the customer, internal customer, external customer, that final product is meant to give them some kind of insight, some kind of um, leverage, right? Um, because if they're not doing this, what's the point of that? What, what's the point of having all of this data you know, and you cannot create any value. You cannot do anything with it. So that, that, that's the gist of it. And so there's this pyramid called the DIKW pyramid in, in, in data speak, right? And the best way to look at this is looking at it from the base going up to the, to the top, right? And so it just gives you an idea of how, you know, we go from just raw data to something tangible, that and that and valuable. So here you have like data at the base, it's raw. You just have red and a bunch of numbers, doesn't really mean anything. Um, but when it's processed um, and it becomes meaningful, it could mean something like south facing, you know, tra um, traffic lights on the corner of Pitt and George streets has turned red. So now that's information, but still it's not, it's not enough. Okay, it's turned red and then what? 
But in context, if you are driving and you're heading towards that, um, and you're heading towards that traffic light, and you happen to be at that location, um, then obviously it's meaningful to you. You now have that knowledge, and with that knowledge, when you apply it, you know, you then stop your car because obviously when you see a red light, you stop. And so that is a very, I would say, very basic and comprehensive way to understand how data, you know, transforms into information, into knowledge, into wisdom. Obviously, in a business context, it might be a little bit more convoluted than that. And so what does value mean in terms of data? Um, and in a business context, usually in a business context, usually is what the business says value is. It depends on what the business is looking for. Usually it's in line with the business's vision. Um, it could be profits, it could be revenue, it could be sales, it could be cost savings, um, it could be anything that the business is focused on. Um, and so they would use data for that purpose. Right. And so that's the gist of it in terms of value. And so how does this happen? Right. OK, data goes, you know, we understand that data moves into information, knowledge, you know, into wisdom, value creation. But then there are things that happen under the hood that, you know, we need to we need to kind of like talk about. Right. Um, and I've, I've, I've kind of um, split, in, split it into three things, um, tooling, skill set and processes. So broadly speaking, um, I'd say there are like two sets of skills. You know, you need your soft skills and you need your technical skills. Now, um, I think Andy touched, touched on that in his presentation. Um, so the technical skills are people like, you know, your developers who are writing code and things like that. The softer skills are people like your product, product manager slash product owner, sort of, um, in terms of people who are liaising with the customer, getting their requirements eliciting their requirements, not just saying, taking down what the customer says, but really understanding what it is that the customer is after and getting it down into what the customer actually needs. Now, this customer like, might be internal, might be external, right? And, and so that's for the softer skills and the technical skills are the people, like I said, who write the code and things like that. Usually they'll use things like um, there are different tools they'll use. And, you know, some of you might recognize some of the um, some of the tools here, like SQL Server to, to kind of query databases, Tableau for visualization, um, SAP business objects for also kind of reporting and things like that. So I say this to say that you know, for it to go from, from data to go from what it is, from its raw form to wisdom or value or whatever you want to call it, um, a lot really goes on under the hood, right? And um, so that's in terms of um, tooling and skill set, but then also in terms of processes, and this kind of overlaps with what um, Andy was saying, is that, you know, sometimes because you're looking at data as a product, you might want to approach it using maybe agile methodology. I, I can understand some people who use skilled agile framework, um, but in this, in this context, I'm talking about adopting agile methodology to deliver the required product. And like I said, you know, the, there's requirements elicitation and you know you have all of these things writing going into a user story the user story is put in the backlog um, and things are prioritized and then the scrum team will deliver on the product in you know a single in a single sprint or multiple sprints because sometimes you might be delivering a data product maybe it's a data dump maybe it's quicker maybe it's a convoluted report or dashboard it might take take more than one sprint usually one sprint is um, in some in some organizations, one sprint is two weeks. In some others, it might be longer. Um, so it might, assuming it's two weeks, a two week sprint, it might be multiple two week sprints to deliver the product, depending on um, what's going on. And so, in doing this, um, you know, you have your customers, right? Um, and you're delivering this functionality. And by way of agile methodology, you deliver a functionality. And, you know, you kind of um, liaise with the customers, um, understand if you're heading in the right direction. So there's constant back and forth liaison between, you know, um, 
developing that product and what the customer wants. You know, you're talking to them, you're saying, okay, I've done this this way. They're like, okay, that's not quite what I was after. You know, it gives you time to adjust, right? Because it's an iterative process. Um, and so I say this to say that the customers, be it internal, external, they need to be kept abreast of what is going on. And so in doing all of this, why, why, why would one want to do all of this? Right? Why will a business want to treat data as a product? And why would they go through all of this? Because it gives them a competitive advantage. Right, When businesses leverage data, it gives them a competitive advantage. It gives them, depending on the nature of the business, it gives them deeper knowledge and understanding of their customer. Um, it can help to streamline processes and improve profitability. I mean, the list goes on, you can, as you can imagine. Right, uh, For all of this to happen, it's a joint effort, you know. Um, it's joint effort required to deliver the value from data. Um, it has to be something that is cultural, right? I would say, you know, in a in a utopian state, it's it's a everyone is looking at data as okay, this thing where we can derive value from. And so it's not just a bunch of tech guys writing code or doing whatever. It's it's business people understanding that data is important. It's also the technical guys. It's just everybody within the organization um, understanding the importance of it and you know, joining forces to kind of really realize that value. So it's an all-encompassing exercise, so to speak. So that kind of brings me to the end of my presentation. I've tried to make it as simple and straightforward as possible, um, but I'm hoping that you know, um, as a takeaway, you know, you um, you understand why you know data can be viewed that data would be viewed as a product, um, how it is a tangible product for customers, and how they can see you know the, you know see value and insights for their use, and not just customers in terms of business, but just in general. Mm -hmm.